Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be be open to new possibilities. Well, I've got an email here from a guy who obviously was trying to get his ex back. He even had a trip planned to go to Bali, figuring, hey, we'll be able to rekindle things. Well, shortly before the trip, she's like, hey, I just want you to know we're strictly going as friends. And I'm not interested in getting back together rekindling anything. So obviously he was not happy about that. And then on top of that, she brought her new boyfriend on the trip to Bali. So – but the story actually has a happy ending because once he got there, he's like, fuck it. I'm by myself. I'm going to have a kick-ass time and I'm going to make the best of it. And he met a really cool chick on his vacation. So I have a quote that I wrote and then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says – A great positive affirmation to use when you want to make changes in your life is to say to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if – and fill in the end of that sentence with whatever positive outcome you would like to achieve. This will help your brain focus on, expand, and look for people and circumstances that match your positive affirmation. This is a superior approach to telling yourself an affirmation that your brain knows is a lie such as, I am rich when you are broke or I have a beautiful girlfriend when you are single, etc. These instead become, wouldn't it be nice if I eventually became rich or wouldn't it be nice if I met a beautiful woman who would be happy to become my girlfriend? Your brain can agree with these statements and would focus on seeking and searching for the right people circumstances and actions to take to make them a reality there's a in the self-help movement affirmations have been around forever as long as the self-help movement has but saying affirmations to yourself which are bullshit or they're a lie they're not helpful because your brain says that's bullshit that's not true but if you say to yourself wouldn't it be nice if i met a really great girl today or wouldn't it be nice if i met a really great girl tonight when I went out with my buddies to have a good time. Wouldn't it be nice if it was a side effect of just going out and having a great time with my friends and I met a really great girl or the next great love of my life? Wouldn't it be nice if I go to this job interview, which is a job I'd really love to have, wouldn't it be nice if they gave me the job? Not, I'm going to get this job, I'm going to get this job, I'm going to get this job, but wouldn't it be nice if? Because your brain has to say, well, yeah, it would be nice. And then you're now looking and seeking for to make something happen consciously and unconsciously. Your brain's doing that. But if you tell your brain a lie, your brain's going, oh, that's bullshit. So let's go through his email. He says, Hi Corey, how's it going? I got a success story I'd like to share with you, and hopefully some guys out there can relate. First off, I owe a lot of this to your work after taking action and really implementing what you teach. I've gotten myself to a great place and feel so grateful and happy about myself. So thank you for that, good sir. Well, you're welcome. Thanks you. Thank you for applying it. Thank you for becoming awesome. The more awesome people we have in the world, the better the world's going to be. The better the world's going to be that our kids get to grow up in. It's a win-win for everybody. Everybody wins. I sent you an email a month ago explaining about my situation with going to Bali with my ex and how she wanted to go as friends. Oh, that sounds like fun. But my only intention was to get back together. That still stood and I ended up going to Bali but doing my own thing and she went with her newfound boyfriend who, funny enough, has the same name as me. What a quinky dink. It was awkward when we were in the same plane and even talked to each other a few times but I managed to flirt with a few girls in the flight to keep my mind off of it and ease my mind. Anyway, upon landing, we parted ways And that was the last I saw her for the three weeks that I was there. Awesome. After that, Corey, I felt so happy and so free. It was the best feeling to wake up and just do whatever you want without having to check in with anyone or coordinate with someone. You should be your own wingman. I mean, it's a great place. Oh, I got to go out with somebody. It's like, why take out, especially if you've got friends that aren't as successful with you or they're not interested in following the things you're learning, all they're going to do is cock block you when you go out anyway. So this way, you go out and if you meet somebody, you, you can take them home with you. You don't have to worry about how your friend's going to get home or whatever or if they drove. Or, I mean, you don't have to worry about those logistics. 
be a fucking free agent. Not only that, but the amount and kind of girls I hooked up with was almost astonishing as well as a self-discovery along the way. I would say that anyone and everyone should travel alone at least once in their life. It's such a life-altering experience altogether. I met the most amazing girl who was traveling with her co-workers from India. We were only able to hang out for four nights, but it was honestly like hanging out with myself. We had so much in common and connected on so many levels so soon. Everything felt so right. I could tell how much she was into me without even showing it, and I was definitely into her. It felt like I met the right person for me at the right time, and it still does. You, you totally change your attitude. You're like, oh, I'm bummed about, you know, here is this new boyfriend of my ex-girlfriend who I wanted back, rubbing it in my face, and you have that fuck it attitude. Let's see what happens. And you go just wanting to explore life and be open to whatever happens. Wouldn't it be nice if I met a great girl on this trip? <laughs> Boom. What happens? You meet a great girl on the trip. We've been talking over the phone almost every day as she is back in India and I am back in Canada. It's great because although we are both very much attracted to each other, we don't ask for much or don't get butt hurt when we are too busy with our schedules. She's very understanding and not at all high maintenance. She hates texting and voicemails, as do I, so all of our communication has been through phone calls. We should be doing Skype, video dates, or FaceTime. That's the best way. It's a lot easier to read their body language and physiology when you can see them as well. We've been planning on taking a trip together to Southeast Asia in December, and it seems like every career opportunity she gets is in Canada. Could it mean something a lot more? It's possible. That's it. you got to look at it as simply a possibility. Because ideally, what you really want to have is somebody that's in your city, that's near to you. I mean, I've done a lot of long-distance relationships in my life, and they can be wonderful. It's great because you got a tour guide, in essence, to show you around the, the country and experience the culture, and especially if it's a different language. They can do all the translating for you, and they're your sex playmate. It's a fucking win-win. I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and that we put out – what we put out in the universe has a huge effect on our lives. I've completely forgotten about my ex clearly, but I don't wish any ill on her. I've met her new boyfriend and he's a wonderful guy and someone she deserves in her life. She's his problem now. I'm truly at peace with everything that has transpired and so happy with where things are at. My only minor concern is with this girl from India. Clearly, there's something developing. I mean, we hooked up while in Bali, and it was truly amazing the way we connected and gelled. I've never had that with anyone else before. My concern is with the whole long distance thing. I've never done this before, and right now I'm only living in the moment and not thinking about the future, but it's hard not to when I'm falling for her. Whoa, slow down, dude. I mean, at some point, Somebody's going to have to travel. You're going to have to travel or she's going to have to travel. And I mean to be able to – I mean if she works as an employee, she's only going to get maybe one week a year, two weeks a year, holiday. So you got to consider those things. If you're dating somebody who's an entrepreneur, has their own business and they can make their own schedule, then that's a much better situation if you're going to do a long distance thing. I know it's going to be hard and I'll be asking myself, do I want to keep – going at this but I also believe that there will always be a way to make things work in the end and I'll find a way to do it. Well, you got to make sure that she's making mutual effort as well and since you can't physically be together, you're going to do Skype video dates or FaceTime chats in between. Let her do most of the calling, texting and pursuing. Just same principles apply. The only difference is your dates are going to be via video Skype or FaceTime chat. Maybe I answered my own question with that one, haha. Ha. Anyway, thanks for reading this and your thoughts are more than welcome. Well, I would I would keep the possibility open but I mean at the end of the day, she's in India. I mean it says you're going to take a trip together in December. So that's six months from now. So to go six months without seeing each other is a long time. So I would – if I were you, I'd want to bump that up. I wouldn't want to wait till December. And in the meantime, I would continue dating other women that are in your city. Don't just – because you got this one girl in your life, 
put your whole personal life on hold for somebody that's half a world away and you're only going to see her once or twice a year. I mean, you got to think about that for a second. Think about the logistics of that and definitely keep your options open. I mean, that was the whole purpose of the video is keeping your options open. And by keeping your options open, you met this great girl and now it sounds like since you met her, even though her conditions aren't really ideal, you really should still be keeping your options open because the ideal situation is to find somebody that lives where you are. I mean, she may eventually get a job in Canada. It sounds like she's got some prospects. But I mean, at the end of the day, she may or may not do that. And you can't really count on that. So just play it by ear. As, as long as she's making the effort, as long as she's doing most of the pursuing and you're setting dates, just see where it goes. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.